Hello gamers, welcome back, or in case you are new here, I'm NKZL, and in this video I want to give you some useful information for the game that everyone seems to be playing right now. I'm referring to Paul World. I've been playing it since it came out, and I learned quite a few things, so hopefully these tips will help you not make the same mistakes I did, and improve your overall experience with the game. But before we talk about these tips, I will first take just a moment to talk about Paul World, for those that might not be aware. If you are already aware, then feel free to skip this section. Timestamps will be provided. So, what is Pal World? It's a sandbox survival game where you can explore a fantasy world alone or with your friends, set up bases and capture different creatures called pals that you use as combat pets, mounts or even as workers. For now, the entire game is PvE, but in the future it will also have PvP for those interested that will involve open world battles and even raiding each other's bases. This game is made by an indie team. It uses stylized art for characters, while the environment is made with stock assets, so things might not even look consistent when it comes to the art style. It's also an early access title, so it has bugs, and the official servers are a laggy mess. There are even some allegations from salty Nintendo fans and anti-AI keyboard warriors. But all this doesn't matter one bit, because the game is fun. When we talk about games and entertainment, the one thing that matters the most is enjoyment, everything else is a distant second place. This game is available for free on the Microsoft Game Pass, and in spite of that, it sold over 5 million copies on Steam in the first 72 hours, and it has reached the second highest concurrent player numbers in Steam history, and who knows, maybe in a week or two, it will take the first spot. Considering the high number of players and the overwhelming positive reviews, I can confidently say that this game delivers a fun experience. With that out of the way, let's talk about tips that will help you make the most out of your adventures. I would assume that most people are not familiar with the sandbox survival genre, since no other sandbox survival game has ever reached this kind of popularity. So let's start with the basics. You can choose to play the game single player or multiplayer. Playing it single player is pretty self-explanatory, so let's focus on the multiplayer aspect. To play multiplayer, you will have to join or host a server. When it comes to joining a server, you will be able to join either an official one or a community-made one. In the case of this game, I highly recommend not joining an official server. As you can expect, with a high number of players, the official servers are in a terrible state, and I think it will be a pretty bad experience for most players. So you are left with the choice of joining a community-made server or hosting your own. This is a choice you'll have to make, but I highly recommend setting up a server for you and your friends. If you join someone else's server, you will be at the mercy of whoever owns the server. One day, they might decide to wipe the server or shut it down entirely. For those that want the easiest solution, you can just start a gameplay session that will only be online for as long as you are playing, and if you press escape, you will have an invite code that you can send to your friends so they can join you. For those that want to go the extra mile, you can either host your own dedicated server or pay for a hosting service. If you want to host a dedicated server yourself, you will need to set it up. But keep in mind that you will need to have an above average PC and internet connection. The advantages of a dedicated server is that it can be online even when you are not playing. Here you will have to decide for yourself which choice is better, I will leave a link in the description of the video if you want to know more about setting up your own server. The next choice is making a character. Here you only have to be aware that you cannot edit a character after making it. Also, there is a color palette for everything, so you can create a character as colorful as you want. After you are done creating a character, the game will ask you where you would like to spawn. This doesn't matter much, as the same choices will be offered to you whenever you die. But the spawn points do give you a bit of information on the respective areas. After you spawn, the game will give you a basic tutorial. I recommend following it until it asks you to build a PAL box, which is fairly early on. Building a PAL box is the way you claim a territory, and this choice will affect you in the long run. 
I highly recommend going around the map and finding a place that has at least 4 or 5 ore nodes, these brown rocks. You will need a serious amount of these and having to go out of your way to acquire ore will be a pain. If you are playing on your own server, the locations will not be taken by other players and this is the location me and my friends chose, but there are plenty of others. Choosing a good location will save you a lot of wasted time in the long run, so take a little bit of time and choose a location that you are happy with. If you found a location, but there are enemies there, do not worry, they will despawn after a little bit of time if you place your pole box there and they will not respawn again inside your territory. Your pole box can also be used to fast travel, so do not worry about choosing a location close to the fast travel point. When you are building your base, try to set it up efficiently, so try to reserve space for all kind of buildings. For example, put all the beds or your piles in the same space, and all your workbenches close to each other, and so on. Since we are talking about resource nodes, if you gather resources, do not build on top of the empty space, as resource nodes will only respawn if there is nothing built there. Once you've chosen a location for a base, you are ready to truly begin your adventure. The game gives you a minimal tutorial that will help you understand the basics of the game. But after that, it is entirely up to you what you choose to do with your time. That being said, let's explore some of the other things you should know and I believe will help you in your adventure. Whatever actions you do, you will gain XP. This will level up your character. When you level up, you will be able to choose different stats. And as a new player, you might not be aware of which of these are best to choose, so let me explain. HP, pretty self-explanatory, it increases your HP. This is the most important stat, as it allows you to survive, and as you progress further and further into the game, it becomes more relevant. Stamina and Attack are stats that are very effective early on, but once you capture mounts and flying mounts, they will become less relevant since when you are mounted, you will be using the mount's attack and stamina. There are situations where it can be useful to have a few points in them, but in general I think HP would be a much better choice. The next stat is Work Speed. This is a stat that will be helpful at lower levels, but as you progress through the game, you will capture pals that will do your work for you, and they will do it much faster than you ever could. So, in my opinion, investing in this stat is a total waste. The last stat is Weight. This is another very important stat. This basically allows you to carry more. While there will be some pals that you can capture that will increase this stat if you have them in your party, the increase is marginal. Considering all this information, I highly recommend treating your HP as your primary stat and Weight as your secondary. This, in my opinion, will provide you with the best and most consistent experience in the long run. Since we just mentioned stats, let's talk about leveling. The easiest way to level is by catching pals. For the first 10 of each species you capture, the game will give you a ton of bonus XP. So if you are looking to level fast, just craft a bunch of pal balls and go around capturing 10 of each species. It will make leveling a breeze. But maybe you are having difficulties with capturing some of these spells. And there are four ways to increase your capture rate. The first one is lowering the HP of the pal you are trying to capture. The closer to zero it is, the higher the chance. The second way to increase your capture rate is crafting higher quality balls. The third way is collecting effigies and increasing your capture rate at a statue. And the fourth way, that I am sure not many people are aware of, is by targeting the pals from behind. All this means that in multiplayer, or using pals to tank the enemy, you can easily target their back and significantly increase your capture rate. To get your pal to tank the pal you are trying to capture, you need to let them get aggro. And once the pal you are trying to capture is low on health, you can open the command menu and order your pal to stop attacking. On PC, you can do this by holding 4 by default. Also, it's worth keeping in mind that you can capture pals even when mounted. The next tip is pretty basic, but read your partner's skills of the pals you capture. 
These partner skills can be pretty important and will allow you to use your pawns in the most effective way. Speaking of partner skills, they can be leveled up by using the Condenser, which is a building you unlock pretty early on. This will allow you to choose a pawl and sacrifice a number of pawls from the same species to increase the star level of the selected pawl. This will increase both the level of the partner skill and the stats. Passive skills will remain the same as they star up, so make sure you select a pawl with good passive skills. The last tip I have for you is keeping an eye out for shiny pals. These are better versions that usually have better passive skills and higher stats. You can spot them because they are usually bigger than their normal counterparts and have sparkles. The same tips that apply for capturing normal ones will apply here as well, with a note that you can get a flying mount and fly around at night as they are considerably easier to spot because of the sparkling effect. I hope all this information will be helpful to you and I wish you the best of luck in your adventures. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you feel like it. See you in the next one gamers.